every time you bought a plane, drive a car, or even ride a bicycle, you're relying on a secret planted in Singapore's botanic gardens. A discovery so powerful, it was the glue that held empires together and also helped bring them down. How? The answer lies in a secluded area of the park. The rubber trees you see here are native to the region. They are from one of the furthest countries from Singapore, Brazil. In the 1800s, Brazil had a near monopoly on rubber. And you don't want to buy from a monopoly unless you like paying high prices. So Britain put off one of the world's largest botanical hives. Under the cover of secrecy, they smuggled 70,000 seeds out of Brazil. Some of those rubber seeds found their way to Singapore. They landed right here in the botanic gardens. Henry Ridley, the first scientific director of the gardens, pioneered methods to harvest rubber effectively without killing the trees. After conducting countless experiments, he discovered the right shape and depth to cut the tree to harvest latex. Crucially, the tree could be cut this way every day and the same amount of latex will flow out from the tree for 20 years. Ridley also developed methods that allowed rubber trees to mature in 5 years instead of 10. For 6 long years, Ridley preached the gospel of rubber to skeptical farmers. He offered them free rubber seeds, but they laughed at him, calling him Mad Ridley, dismissing his dreams as a fool's fantasy. Who could believe that waterproof boots existed? But he kept going because he knew he wasn't wrong. Finally, in 1896, one man listened. Tan Che Yen. That single yes changed everything. Shortly after, Brazil started growing coffee, sending prices plummeting. Coffee farmers followed Tan's lead and switched to rubber. And where did most of the rubber go? Tires for cars and demand for cars accelerated the rise of rubber plantations. By the 1930s, Southeast Asia was growing 90% of the world's rubber. In 2015, UNESCO listed the Botanic Gardens as a World Heritage Site. In its successful application, Singapore said that without the work done in the Singapore Botanic Gardens, it is unlikely that the great developments in the automobile, aviation, textiles, and numerous other industries, which rely on the mass production of natural rubber, would have taken place. Why was Southeast Asia so successful at growing rubber? In Brazil, rubber trees are vulnerable to South American leaf blight, a fungus that doesn't exist in Southeast Asia. So please don't bring that virus over. It's no surprise that between the two world wars, Singapore became the rubber capital of the world. Indeed, the rubber boom brought wealth, built roads and ports, and drew waves of migrants, creating multicultural societies in Southeast Asia. More than that, the rubber boom influenced the region's path to independence. The rubber plantations were strategically vital, which helped make Southeast Asia a prime target for Japan and Japan invaded in 1941 with planes soaring on rubber tyres, tanks rolling on rubber tracks, soldiers pedalling bicycles with rubber tyres, and boots pounding the ground with rubber soles. The rubber fueling the invasion, it almost certainly came from the lands they were now conquering. So when I say that Southeast Asia facilitated its own invasion, I'm not stretching the truth. And this is where the story gets a little personal. My grandparents grew up in a world where Westerners seem invincible, untouchable, like gods in uniforms. But when the Western colonial powers surrendered to the Japanese, that illusion shattered. The people who ruled the world knew. That moment planted a seed, not in the ground, but in the minds of an entire generation. The mighty could fall, and the colonized could rise. For example, Singapore's founding father wrote, In 70 days of surprises, upsets, and stupidities, British colonial society was shattered, and with it, all the assumptions of the Englishman's superiority. Even the United States panicked. After losing access to Southeast Asia's rubber, 
President Roosevelt pleaded with Americans to donate spare rubber. We are going to see to it that there's enough rubber to build the planes to bomb Tokyo and Berlin. Enough rubber to build the tanks to crush the enemy wherever we may find him. Enough rubber to win this war. Simply put, no rubber, no victory. So when colonial powers crumbled under the Japanese invasion, something else grew in their place. An unstoppable desire for independence. The people wanted to determine their own destiny. And they soon got it. Today, independent Southeast Asia still produces 80% of the world's natural rubber. And Singapore is the world's nerve center for rubber trading. And even though synthetic rubber can now be produced effectively, you still need natural rubber for things you don't want to fail. Surgical gloves, condoms, and airplane tires, to give three examples. So the next time you're feeling small or insignificant, Remember that a quiet garden in Singapore changed the world. Greatness doesn't need to shout. It just needs a place to grow. Quietly, patiently, until one day, the world realizes that it can't live without it.